This has been driving me crazy for years. I love pushing the boundaries of beekeeping to see what beekeeping can be. I know I could buy a metal one that's already made to take a frame, but I'm too impatient to order one and wait for it to be shipped. I'm gonna make my own. Staple guns can be a nightmare. Right, here we go, I'm gonna put a lot of pressure. This is so fun, we have so much more to do in this video, and I wanna pop in here real quick and say, please subscribe, it means so much to me when you subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Now let's get back to work. So in doing this experiment, a couple of things came to mind is that will I be able to overwinter queens like this? Like can the hive is going to cluster in the wintertime and if they cluster, will they cluster enough to keep the hive, you know, keep these queens warm? What if these queens that I'm storing or banking over the winter hive, what if they're outside of the cluster area? If they're outside of that cluster, um, then they're not going to be warm. The other thing is, let's say I successfully overwinter these two or three or four queens, if I bank them and overwinter them, um, will anything happen to these mated queens that are a year old where they may not ever lay again? Let's say they overwinter and I put them in a, a brand new nuke box. Um, I'm going to have to watch and see if they're good layers, having been banked, because I know you really can't bank virgin queens past 21 days, but banking mated queens, I'm thinking biologically, they should be able to pick up and start laying again if they survive in these, in these cages. But you don't know until you try it, right? And so if it doesn't work, okay, it didn't work. But if it works, it'll really change a lot of things. What impact would banking queens over winter really have on beekeeping? If I can get early queens in the spring, I can have more queens faster for my nukes and my splits. But I can't staple it now. We'll staple it in the field. So let's go back to the field. That's crazy. Let's look at the next one. See if it's any better. There's a green queen. All right, so I'm going to put her in a queen cage. There she goes. Okay, she's in there. Let's put a cap on it. All right, this is a queen that we'll take from this hive. We're going to take the one queen to do our experiment with. We're gonna put her in our homemade little cage here. And we're gonna pop her in maybe in the middle right here. It doesn't really go that way, so let's, tr oh, let's try it that way. There we go. More in the middle. All right, and then we'll get our wire tie to kind of keep it up there at the top. Okay, there. All right, looks good. Yep. That's not bad. Okay. Whoa, slipped off on me. Oh, 
harder out in the field than it was on the table. There we go. Let's start back over here. Yep, that's good. <laughs> that's not good. Wow. Pin came out and I stuck a nail in there. Let's put one beside it. Oh, that worked. Get one down here. Yep. The bottom. Ah, not real good. Hmm. Ain't working good. Push down a little harder. Huh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, that's got enough to hold it though. Yep. Perfect. Yeah, the queen's moving around in there. To take a couple of these out that didn't quite go in. So we're back over here now. We have, um, wow, that's a medium down below and a deep here, and another medium, another medium. And so we feel like what we're going to attempt to do to overwinter that queen is to actually take a frame of honey out of the center here and then. I'd actually like to put it in this second deep, or second super here. That might be a better choice of trying to overwinter her. Yeah, let's try that. Smoke in there a little bit. Let's be quick. Alrighty. Let's see what's on it. Hopefully it will be honey or nectar. Oh, brood. Who would have thought brood this high up? Wow brood and larvae and all that good stuff. Interesting. Okay, that's fine. It changes our plan a little bit, plan of attack. Let's go back and put our queen up in here. I kind of like that better. So what we're going to do is take the top off, kill that small high beetle, and we're going to put our queen frame up in the top. All right, let's see what this frame looks like here. All right, mostly capped over honey. And there's nothing in the cells below, so you could harvest that and it would be completely harvestable. Knock my bees off. We'll have to work fast because robber bees will find that. Here's our queen that we're going to overwinter in our little cage. We're going to put her up here. Let's see if that works. We'll know it's her by that little tie-down tie wire strap sticking up. Wow, look at that. That is crazy. we got to get this inside. Wow, that was a rough day in the bee yard this late in the year. Um, what would have worked better if I would have combined these hives about a month ago? <laughs> I waited about a month too long, but we did a little bit of combining there. Um, but the bees were so out of resources and they just weren't strong nucleuses or resource hives anymore. But anyway, we did uh, go through with the experiment. We are going to try one queen in that special little cage I made to see if it's possible how long she'll last. I'll keep checking even if the weather's decent. I like putting her on the top and I'll come back as uh, long as I can open up the top of the hive and take a look uh, maybe throughout the winter see if she's still okay and um, but I'm going to play with this more to see how I can uh, kind of bank 
some overwintered queens. If you're just starting beekeeping this year, or if you're starting next year, I've got a great playlist of videos that answers your questions. It's a green answer chair video series. Check it out right over here and it will help you guys out. See you over there.